We're gonna tell you four critical things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to growing your YouTube channel, and we're starting right now. What is going on? My name is Nick. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, today I'm here with Sean Cannell from the YouTube channel Think Media TV, YouTube channel Video Influencers, and the YouTube channel Sean Cannell. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, man. Thank you. So, so on your YouTube channel, you have you have a combined total. You're approaching a million subscribers. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into that. There's a lot of thought, a lot of a lot of strategy, a lot of you know things that you need to make sure that you're focusing on when you you know have that kind of success. What are some main points that you have for content creators that they need to really dial in and make sure that they're keeping an eye on? That's a great question. You know, I think uh, point number one is actually embrace the process and mm -hmm. you need to practice because uh, a lot of times like on video influencers, you know, we'll share tips, you do as well. And every once in a while in the comments, someone will be like, I'm just so discouraged. I'm not getting the views, I'm not getting the traction. And so I don't just look at that at face value. I click through and I look at their channel. And I, then I look and I see their channel's been around for two years. They've posted five videos total, months and months apart. And they're like, why is this thing not growing? growing and so they're really not posting enough but also they haven't practiced enough you know I like to say your first videos are gonna be your worst videos yeah and you got to get through those I like to encourage people you know get your first 50 videos up your first 100 videos up and then you're just getting started you're finding your voice you're being awkward you're even kind of figuring things out and for me I kind of had the advantage of actually back in 2003 I was volunteering as an intern at my youth group mm. and uh, the youth pastor handed me a video camera and said hey start making weekly video announcements and Nick those video announcements were terrible right sure but I made them every single week so I made 52 videos that year. They would play every Wednesday night. And so YouTube wasn't even out yet, but I was like cutting my teeth. I was using Premiere. I was like learning how to use uh, Adobe. I still use it today. Then eventually the lead pastor was like, make these on the weekends as well. And so now I'm doing 104 videos a year. And just as a volunteer, learning to like pump out a ton of content. And if it wasn't for all of those kind of videos, I wouldn't have gotten to the ones where now I'm feeling more confident on camera. I'm starting to figure out my voice. I'm starting to figure out best practices because I've practiced. Nice, fantastic. So that grind, Oh my gosh. I, I bet like just having that dumped on you was like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna how am I, how am I gonna make all this content, right? Yeah, but it was insane. Right now, how, how much how much content are you putting out um, like over the over the course of a week? I mean, over the course of a week on a perfect week, it's two videos on video influencers, two videos on Think Media, and a live stream on each channel. Now to be fair, uh, sometimes we're not hitting those live streams. Sure. But a baseline for us is one a week no matter what. I mean it's like come hell or high water, that's happening. But uh, definitely striving for that. And then the thing too is we're actually publishing quite a bit of content on other platforms. Platforms and there's kind of a trickle down effect. That's a lot of content. But I would say too, my mindset and my mentality was being shaped over 15 years ago. And so I'm kind of like, yeah, this is just normal. You got to pump out a lot of content. Sure. So the first one, uh, the first one they have is practice. What is the next tip on the list for for content creators to make sure that they that they keep in mind? Absolutely. Yeah. If you want to stand out on YouTube or anywhere, uh, it's positioning. So number two is positioning. Where do you stand in the market? And there's a quote from uh, Sally Hogstead that says this: "Different is better." Then better. Mm. And you know, I think that's so important because what YouTube doesn't need is another Nick Nimmin. Right. YouTube doesn't need another Casey Neistat. The world doesn't need no. another Nick Nimmin. Right, right, right. <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, uh, they don't need another Sean Cannell yeah. or Amy Landino or whoever. They need you. Yeah. They need you to be you, you to be you times two. But on top of that, positioning is such a big deal. You have to figure out how you're different in the marketplace. You know, in business, they call it a USP, your unique selling position. And so you say, how am I positioned? And you, a lot of times also, there's another P for you, you kind of want to be polarizing. Like if one person's going this direction, you want to be the different thing. You don't just want to be an echo. You want to actually be kind of a voice yeah. that actually has a unique stance and a unique position. Now, let's just make that practical though. Sometimes you're like, well, do I have to make up something totally obscure and totally weird? You know, even for us, when we started video influencers, we're in the same niche. Yeah. We do different styles. We yeah. do different things. And even at that time, nobody had really created a weekly interview interview show. Sure, Tim was posting interviews and we're doing an interview now, but like that's a pillar for us. Oh yeah. Is like that's kind of what we built it around. So it's just like a small tweak. And sometimes I like to say small tweaks can lead to giant peaks. Oh, I love it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like just it. a little bit of a different positioning. So how can you just be a little bit different? Because again, a lot of times you're not going to be better when you try to wear somebody else's shoes, you know, when you try to be somebody else. Now, even saying that though, I do encourage people to actually imitate other people. 
because it's kind of like mentorship. If you were going to go apprentice under somebody, they wouldn't just say, hey, yeah, just, you know, figure it out. You're a master now. Do it your own. They go, no, do it exactly like me. They go, watch me do it. I'll watch you do it. And now you do it on your own and develop your unique style. So to be fair, maybe you watch a Peter McKinnon video and you actually try to like do the same edits, to do the same shots. The process of doing that, someone could call you that you were copying. You're like, no, I'm just trying to like learn the ropes from someone that's a master at filmmaking. When you do that, you eventually find your own voice. But eventually, if you're gonna stand out, you have to have a unique position in the marketplace. Yeah, fantastic. You know like on my channel that was one of the approaches that I took as well you know at the time uh, there wasn't you know a lot of people on the on YouTube there was but in our space you know like people don't like the lights in the background and you know, I've got like hip-hop in there and you yep. know what I mean so like I took that uh, my approach was I'm gonna come at creators like creators instead of coming at creators like this like coach person you know that way so I'm gonna like try to be a little bit creative in the content that I make and things like that and that was kind of the way that I tried to carve my way in as well and I love that because even just little style things like yeah. sometimes and that's encouraging too because half of your positioning is just the fact you're different already yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, in this case, there's a lot of dudes in our space. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of guys. Primarily. Like there's a, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of room for just if you're going to be a woman or different uh, nationalities, different, yeah. you know, ethnicities. Mm. Sometimes that that's who some people resonate with you. They don't they're not going to like Nick. Right. Some people, are, they don't like me. They're like, dude, what's wrong with the dude's hair? Like, why is it puffed up? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like somebody like they're not they're not going to resonate with everyone. But some people will resonate with you when you are you times two. Yeah. Like you got to amplify your own voice, your own style. Fantastic, man. So tip number three, what do you got? All right. So tip number three is the principles or another way to put it is the best practices. And that's simply to say it's what you teach. Mm. You know, if you haven't actually gone through Nick's whole library and binge watched the entire thing with the notebook out and actually said, you know what, I'm going to go through the uh, Nimanati University. You know, yeah. I'm going to sit down on a weekend because you got to study the best practices they've been established you know whether that's just thumbnails titles metadata video structure even just communicating on camera or structuring how you would teach or entertain or whatever it is you should treat YouTube just like anything else you got to study and learn what are the best practices like in golf uh, which I'm horrible at I haven't learned the best practices you got to learn the form right you don't just go out there and make up how to hit a ball unless you're happy Gilmore uh, but ultimately you you learn from a coach and that's kind of what you're doing you're just helping people learn the best uh, ways to get views and how the algorithm works. And so you really want to become a student of what are the principles for success on YouTube. And eventually you can build on those and, 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 and move even outside of those as well. But it starts with learning the best practices yeah. in any discipline and in the industry. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the foundation. Yeah. yeah, it's the foundation. It's, it's the it's the place where you're building your house, yep. right? So you have to learn those principles. And uh, YouTube actually has a free resource, the YouTube Creator Academy, that is basically the instruction manual yeah. for how to use YouTube. And that, that will actually teach you all of the best practices as well. Fantastic. So number four, what do you got? And then number four, Nick, is perseverance. Mm. You know, if we think yeah. about ultimately you've, you've been through this process, like this wasn't overnight for you, right? right? It's been years. Yeah. And a lot of times though, social media, it sends a lot of wrong messages to everybody because there is always the exceptions that just blow up overnight, or there's those that appear to blow up overnight. But the reality is, I heard it put this way, that overnight success takes 10 years. Yeah. That a lot of times there's that moment where all of a sudden you discovered Nick and you're like, man, he's got you know over 100,000 subscribers, what have you, just showed up out of nowhere. Yeah. Like that guy must have just got lucky. That's not the case, right? right? There was a lot of perseverance. And at the end of the day, this, um, you know, you already know, it could get discouraging. Yeah. There's gonna be times when you're gonna wanna quit. There's gonna be times when you thought something was gonna work and it did it. There's gonna be times when you wish you thought it was gonna go faster. You hit setbacks, you hit discouragement. You have to embrace the process. You gotta persevere. And so I like to put it this way, that you really treat YouTube as a marathon and not a sprint. Mm. You know, if you were gonna do a sprint, you you wear these certain track shoes with the spikes on them and you get into the blocks and then you get up and then they shoot the gun and you give it all you can for 100 meters and then you just like wanna collapse at the end because you just put your body to the max. If you do that for a marathon, you're just gonna hit a wall and you're not even gonna get close to finishing. That's gonna be 26 miles of running. So it's a different approach. It's gonna be different shoes. It's gonna be a different mindset. You really wanna treat YouTube, I think, kinda of like a small business. And so if I was to even put a time clock on that, they usually say most small businesses are not profitable for 24 to 36 months. And so especially watching a channel like yours, people can, I believe, cut their learning curve in half. They can get to the destination faster. So maybe it's not gonna take 10 years, 
but it still might take two take or three yeah. of really going at it. Yeah. And so really just being out there and knowing like with that in mind, a marathon runner, you know what they're going to do? They're going to bring some water with them or there's going to be hydration stations on the way. They're going to bring maybe those little gel packets or honey so you can take that to be nourished along the way. You have to know that you need to pace yourself mm. on YouTube because there's ups and downs, man. Sometimes, I mean, it could get it could get intense. It can be emotionally, you know, you're just exhausted. You can face burnout. And that happens to a lot of creators. It doesn't get talked about a ton, but there is a need of perseverance and pacing yourself because, hey, it, it's so frantic and social. I get that way here. I get anxiety at VidCon. I'm like, I need to be doing everything and be yeah. everywhere and we're doing so much and we need to be doing more. Yeah, let's chill out. Breathe a little bit, you know, slow down and realize, okay, we can be patient and we want to persevere. Still, of course, speed matters in social media. Oh, sure. But at the end of the day, like what good is it if you just go as fast as you can and hit a wall and quit? Mm -hmm. You really want to pace yourself. Fantastic, man. So so with burnout, um, you know, with all of that content that you're putting out, all of that time that you've put in, you know, because you've been making content for a really long time. Have you had periods of time where you've experienced burnout to where you're like, you know, what am I what am I doing? Like, you know, I don't know how much more of this I can do. Like, have you have you ever experienced that? Yeah, I have. Uh, and, you know, at different times, there's been times where, you know, only in the last couple of years has I started full time, like full, full on. And I guess full time is subjective because sure. full time is if you're freelancing and you're editing, I've done that. So I was full time on my own. But full time is just making uh, revenue off of YouTube as like a solo creator. And that was my main source of income. It's only been since about October 2015. Mm -hmm. So about three years. Before that, like when you've got a side hustle and you've got a job and you've got these different things, you're trying to do YouTube. There was times where I remember we daily vlogged for 50 days. And man, I hit a wall hard because I was doing that on top of some other things. Just 50 days. I know some people like they go longer than that, but it really can wear you down. And what's so funny is this, you know, there's a quote that says, tired eyes rarely see a bright future. Mm. Oh, and that's great. It's, it's, yeah, it's great. And so when you start getting tired, you start making bad decisions, you start whatever, you know, you, you, you get more discouraged, all these types of things. So what's so funny is what should you do if you're tired? You need to rest. And so I sometimes think as creators, we're too hard on ourselves. And I've seen this. We know we should post at least once a week. Yeah. Or we should post at least three times a week. But sometimes when you hold yourself to a, a, a numerical number at the detriment of your mental health, your physical health, like you're just on a bad path. It's okay. Like the world is going to keep going right. if you take a week off. Yeah. You know, like the world is keep going if you, if you even take a couple weeks off. And the longevity in this space while staying healthy is a lot more important, in, in my opinion, than just trying to, you know, hit that number no matter what and be so hardcore. And over the years early on, especially in the side hustle season, I think I burned the candle at both ends a little too hard. And uh, I mean, if I get the other thing that's kind of crazy is I actually have RSI. It's called mm. repetitive stress injury. Mm. It's kind of like tennis em uh, elbow oh, okay. where I just kind of get like pain and cramping in my arms from editing for so long, not taking breaks for like well over 10 years, sometimes all night long. Come on, you know what it's like. Oh, yeah. to, oh, yeah. Just crushing yeah. Red Bulls or whatever sure, it takes yeah. to just got to get these up, you know? get these up. Yeah. And so and, and so like I actually physically hurt my body a little bit and things are going great and I, you know, there's kind of a rehab to it, but it was so extreme. So I look back and I'm like, man, I'm only 34 and I, I plan on being this, in this thing for a lot longer. So I, I, if at the time I realized, man, I need to have a bigger vision that like I need to pace myself and not burn out. Uh, I really wanna encourage you again, sprint as fast as you can because it's a competitive industry. You're passionate about it, you love doing it, but don't hurt yourself, don't hurt your health, you know, don't sacrifice your family, any of those things. All right, fantastic, Sean. So uh, you can check out Sean at Think Media TV. You can check out Sean at Video Influencers and on his personal channel. I'll put links to everything down in the description below. Thank you so much for coming on. I, uh, Nick, I appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you. Love what you're doing. I just want to acknowledge you. You know, uh, I love the fact that you're devoting your life to adding value. You know, to helping people, and you're putting out such excellent content. You know, attention to detail matters. The little things matter, and. Uh, you do them so well. Like you could tell that you put not just, you know, best practices into your content, but also your heart into your content. You know, you really love your community. So I just really appreciate you and uh, glad to call you a friend. Thank you. I appreciate it. And if you want to learn more about growing your channel, making videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff, start now by hitting the round subscribe icon so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.